but we have seen them. We've photographed them from space. These are the remains of titanic collisions, some of them vast, 20 or 30 kilometers across. The Earth is being pounded all the time. Siberia, 1908, an entire forest was flattened. There was an impact in Saudi Arabia in 1933. This was caught on camera in Canada in 1972. And near miss, it flew back out into space. If it had crashed on Earth, it would have exploded with more force than an atom bomb. Amazingly, in all these events, no one at all was killed. But even if an asteroid doesn't hit us, it could do something even more dangerous. It could hit the sea. If a big asteroid smashes into the ocean, it could create a huge deadly wave that could wipe out entire cities. I think there's a realistic possibility that something like this could cause serious problems to human civilization sometime in the next century or two. It's not an appealing thought, but the threat is real. Whole cities could be obliterated from space. Whether or not it's your city comes down to luck. But before you feel too lucky, think about this. It may not matter which city you live in. There are things out there which could wipe all life from the face of the planet. Space contains dangers that make asteroids seem utterly insignificant. Our telescopes have captured images of truly colossal disasters. This photograph shows a star a hundred times bigger than our sun, blasting incandescent gas out into space. And this is a black hole, spewing out jets of super-hot matter at close to the speed of light. If these had been near us, there's almost no chance that we'd have survived. It looks as though fortune has been on our side. At least it has, so far. But for how much longer? Professor Mike Rampino thinks the odds for long-term survival of life on Earth could be slim. Luck probably plays a very big role in the existence of life on the planet Earth. You have to realize that the galaxy is a very violent place, and if we get unlucky, that could put an end to complex life on the planet. Here's the problem. We don't notice it, but planet Earth is on the move. While we get on with our lives, the world is hurtling around our galaxy at 230 kilometers a second. And high speed means high risk. Some you win, some you lose. We may not realize it, but we're on the right of our lives. Think of the Earth's orbit as a kind of cosmic roller coaster ride. As we move in this orbit, we're moving past gas clouds. We can come close to black holes. We 
can get close to stars. We can come close to supernova explosions. Any of these objects could cause catastrophes on the Earth. Sound incredible? It's very real. Life on Earth has been all but eradicated on 20 separate occasions. And to make matters worse, it's going to happen again. After all, remember what happened to the dinosaurs. Flying through space is a dangerous business. It's not just that we're moving, it's where we're going. Planet Earth regularly flies through some of the most dangerous areas of the galaxy. Well, if one could speed up time and watch the orbit of the Earth through the galaxy and around the galaxy, it would look like a very, very fast carousel. The sun and, and the planets moving up and down and at the same time moving around the galaxy very rapidly. We go around the galaxy about once every 250 million years, but also we go through the densest part of the galaxy every 30 million years. That's the danger zone. Every 30 million years, our planet Earth travels through a region heavily packed with stars. And it so happens that it's every 30 million years or so that life on Earth comes close to being wiped out. Coincidence? Here is our galaxy, a huge flat pancake of 400,000 million stars all whirling around. The brightest areas are where the stars are most tightly packed. These are the danger zones. And this star is our sun. At the moment, it's just around there, just another pinprick in the cloud of stars that makes up our galaxy. But take a closer look and see how it's moving. It doesn't just go round and round the galaxy, it also goes up and down. And where the sun goes, the earth goes. So, regular as clockwork, we plunge through the danger zone. And every time we do so, the odds are stacked against us. Here's how it works. This is our sun, and each of those other dots is a star. As our sun bobs up and down through the galaxy, we're passing them by the million. And where the stars are densest, the danger is greatest. The reason those other stars are dangerous is the powerful effect of their gravity on our solar system. fly outwards from the Sun, away from the Earth and the other planets, and eventually you encounter these. Chunks of ice, trillions of them, a vast cloud in space. If another star comes too close, its gravity disturbs the cloud and catapults ice chunks in towards the Sun. More than 10 kilometers across, traveling at 40 kilometers a second, it begins its million-year journey into the heart of our solar system. We know these huge snowballs by another name. This is a comet. As it plunges towards the sun, 
It warms up and belches out a haze of gas and dust. An immense cloud trails through space behind it. The comet's tail. But this comet doesn't hit the sun. It skims round it and out. It drifts past Mercury and the planet's gravity swings it onto a new path. Finally, it shoots past the moon and onto a collision course with Earth.